everyone. Welcome to Faith Christian Center. We are so happy you could be with us today. Stay in the habit of doing church with your family. Join us at FCC on Sundays at 9 or 11 a.m. or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It's going to be an awesome time to grow our faith together. Here's what you need to know about what is going on here at FCC. Outreach is a wonderful opportunity to sow your time and reach people for Jesus. Join us on the first Saturday of every month at 10 a.m. as we go door to door to tell people about Jesus and invite them to church. Proverbs 11:25 says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. So as we bring people the good news, attach your faith and stand on the word. God is faithful to fulfill his promises in your life. Water baptism is coming up on Sunday, April 14th during the 11 a.m. service. Jesus told us to follow his example in water baptism. After receiving Jesus as our Lord and Savior, water baptism is symbolic of the old man passing away and all things becoming new. The required age for water baptism is age 13, so if you are ready to take this step of faith and be baptized, you can sign up at guest services or on our Faith Christian Center website. Then on April 14th, bring dark clothing for the baptism, a towel and a change of clothes, and then attend the required baptism class at 10 a.m. in room 240 and invite all of your friends and family to celebrate with you as you take this next step of faith. We are so excited for this awesome Sunday and we can't wait to see all of the wonderful things that God does in response to our obedience as we follow Jesus' example in water baptism. God is someone that we have a personal relationship with so there's no promise the world can make there's no there's nothing the world can say to you and and promise you that hey if you'll do this against what you know is right then you'll get this this and this and this no 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 Jesus can do for you what Satan cannot do for you anytime you doubt yourself anytime you doubt that God, does God really want to do this in my life? Anytime you doubt, you need to remind yourself of the guarantee of the covenant. And the guarantee of the covenant is the fact that He sent His Son to die on the cross for you and I. Did you know that we have a free Faith Christian Center app? Our app is packed with awesome resources to help you hear the word wherever you are. You can listen to past messages and watch our live stream directly from the app. Download our app from any app store that you use. Our Bible reading plan will help you to read through the entire Bible once and the New Testament twice every year. You can find our app easily by visiting our website, faithchristiancenter.com, and clicking App. Download our app and start building your faith today. Here at FCC, we believe that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So we give every time we gather to hear the Word of God being preached. There are multiple ways to give, and here is what you need to know. If you have some of our offering envelopes, their post is paid. You can drop them in the mail, and they'll be delivered to us. You can also give online at FCCgive.com or through text giving by texting our short code, which is 45777. If it is your first time using text giving, you will be asked to fill a one-time form with your card information. If you ever need to change your card info, just text FCC Edit to 45777 and you will be taken to a page to update it. Put God first and don't miss Sundays and Wednesdays. Bring your family and be sure to invite and bring someone with you. Arrive early and help us fill in the front center. Also, be sure to silence your cell phone. Every service is professionally recorded, so please be mindful of that. Help us avoid any distractions. If you get up during the service, you will be asked at the back when you return the auditorium. If you are a young parent and may have to get up during the service, you are welcome to sit towards the back. We also have a nursing mother's room, and the hospitality rooms are available in the fellowship atrium. Please do not take any photos or record videos during the services. 
we want to maintain an atmosphere of worship. Every service is live streamed, and our messages are posted online to our website, our free church app, and our YouTube channel. Thank you for your help. As the Apostle Paul said, let's do everything decently and in order. Help us avoid any distractions. Let's make the focus worship in the ministry of God's Word. Remember, one word from God can change your life forever.
on, give the Lord a shout of victory this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many all know it's Resurrection Sunday, amen? I said, how many all know it's Resurrection Sunday, amen? We celebrate the fact that Jesus died and rose for us. How many are glad about that this morning? Oh, some of y'all need to get a little more excited this morning. How many of y'all are glad about that this morning? How many of y'all know we're going to believe the report of the Lord? We're going to believe what God says about our lives. Amen. Put your hands together and sing this with me. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord.
amen. As we continue to worship the Lord this morning, we're going to have some people come up here to the front. If you have a physical need in your body or maybe you have a need in your family that you want prayer for, just make your way up to the front to anybody up here. Quickly tell them what your need is, and they're going to anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith over you. And as you go back to your seat, just thank God that it is done. Everybody say, it is done. And if you're not coming up here, how many know we stand in agreement with them in the name of Jesus that it is done, amen, as God's word has said and as God has promised, amen. Let's just lift up our hands this morning and worship him. He is so worthy of all our prayers.
Welcome to Easter Sunday 2024. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's hard for me to believe, but this is our 41st Easter as a church. Can you imagine? I was 28 years old. Sue and I were 28 years old when we, we had our first Easter celebration at the hotel as a church. My, my, my. You know, we get older, but the Lord, He, <laughs> he ages not. Amen. Amen. And everybody there with Him, they're not getting old either. Hallelujah. 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 We praise Your holy name, Father. We praise Your holy name because by Your grace, You sent Your Son to do the work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank You for our twofold redemption, the forgiveness of sins and the healing of our bodies. We praise You for it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. How many are in a Faith Christian Center service for the first or second time? Would you lift a hand up? We want to see where you are. Give you a warm greeting and welcome. <laughs> Say welcome. If you would keep a hand lifted until the ushers get to you with a welcome card. One side is in English, one side is in Spanish. You could be a big help to us. If you'd receive one of those, fill it out. You can either drop it in the offering here in a minute, or you can turn it in at the uh, cafe after the service for the beverage of your choice. So glad to have you here this morning. Hallelujah. 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 
I'm so happy to be saved. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad I heard. Praise his holy name. My mom was looking for a healing. She had two slipped discs in her back. And back in those days, of course, it was a gruesome surgery and they would only do one at a time. So she went through the process. I remember staying over with the neighbor boy while she was in the hospital. And uh, she came through that, but she was determined not to do that again. And so she started hunting for her answer on the radio. She had been raised Southern Baptist and she heard uh, James Lee Beal from Bethesda Missionary Temple talking about how Jesus not only saves, Jesus heals. Hallelujah. And so we went to that church and of course she got healed, but uh, she checked me into Sunday school. It was 1960. And uh, I still remember the room. I remember the table and I remember hearing about Jesus and how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I heard and faith came and I believed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God for the messengers who bear the good news. Amen. You know, we're in here enjoying church, but how many are going to be working with the children and working in the nursery? and helping with the Easter egg hunt and all that. Thank God, thank God, thank God for everybody who helps bear the news. Amen. 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 And we can never underestimate God getting a hold of a child's heart because we don't know what they're going to do for God later on. Amen. 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 Well, why don't you greet one another, greet at least a dozen people and then be seated. We have to receive our first offering this morning. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to receive our regular church offering at this time because we have our challenge offering at the end of the service after the message. The ushers are in the aisles. If you need an offering envelope, just lift a hand up. They'll get to you with an offering envelope. You can give to Faith Christian Center in any of the traditional ways through the offering envelope, check, cash, credit card, debit card, all the lines are there. You can give online at fccgive.com or you can text a gift to 45777. If you text a gift, you text FCC in the amount to 45777. If, you, if you're giving to a category, you would text FCC the amount and the category word to 45777. Some of the category words are on the screen behind me. Words like tithes, challenge for the challenge offering, freedom for the freedom fund, missions, feed for feed the hungry, SPPA, that's the St. Paul Scholarship Fund for church kids, the word endow. We have men giving to endow St. Paul's. I want to thank all of you for giving in to the challenge offerings in times gone by. And uh, all of that's being set aside for phase two. Don't just wait and believe God for the money to come. Take action, take action, take action, and believe God that he'll bless the work of your hands and you'll get it all knocked out. I want to thank you for giving into the St. Paul Scholarship Fund for Church Kids. Since we started that 89 months ago, well over a million dollars has come in. We've covered 136 scholarships. We've granted 143, but we're not concerned about it because the money is coming. Thank you for giving into the Freedom Fund. We're still lifting up the names of everybody giving into the Freedom Fund. Somebody say, might, might say, what's that? Well, that's people who have credit card debt, automobile debt, or mortgage debt that they want to get paid off, and they're sowing corresponding seed for getting stuff paid off. You know, it's hard to believe, but in January of 2018, when the Lord told me to uh, quit fooling around and get all this paid off, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine how far we have come as a church. It was January 2018. And since that time, we have paid off 
the $5.27 million we owed at that time on this property and building. We spent $1.7 million giving Faith Christian Center a complete refresh all the way down to new chairs, new computers for St. Paul's and scoreboards for all three ball fields. We updated all the television equipment that cost $643,000. And not only that, not only that, but praise his holy name. You know, we, we, we're looking at maybe, maybe we're just guessing uh, $12 million that we need before we break ground on phase two. Well, we haven't been fooling around and, uh, you know, hoping. No, we've been taking action. So we've got about $5 million of that set aside. Praise his holy name. Amen. Amen. We got some video announcements to share with you and then we'll receive the morning offering. Outreach is a wonderful opportunity to sow your time and reach people for Jesus. Join us on the first Saturday of every month at 10 a.m. as we go door to door to tell people about Jesus and invite them to church. Proverbs 11:25 says, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. So as we bring people the good news, attach your faith and stand on the word. God is faithful to fulfill His promises in your life. Water baptism is coming up on Sunday, April 14th during the 11 a.m. service. Jesus told us to follow His example in water baptism. After receiving Jesus as our Lord and Savior, water baptism is symbolic of the old man passing away and all things becoming new. The required age for water baptism is age 13, so if you are ready to take this step of faith and be baptized, you can sign up at guest services or on our Faith Christian Center website. Then on April 14th, bring dark clothing for the baptism, a towel and a change of clothes, and then attend the required baptism class at 10 a.m. in room 240 and invite all of your friends and family to celebrate with you as you take this next step of faith. We are so excited for this awesome Sunday and we can't wait to see all of the wonderful things that God does in response to our obedience as we follow Jesus' example in water baptism. God is someone that we have a personal relationship with so there's no promise the world can make there's no there's nothing the world can say to you and and promise you that hey if you'll do this against what you know is right then you'll get this this and this and this no 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 Jesus can do for you what Satan cannot do for you anytime you doubt yourself anytime you doubt that God, does God really want to do this in my life? Anytime you doubt, you need to remind yourself of the guarantee of the covenant. And the guarantee of the covenant is the fact that He sent His Son to die on the cross for you and I. Our Spring Challenge offering is coming up on Easter Sunday, March 31st. Many years ago, Dr. Lester Summerall challenged us to receive two special offerings every year. This is how we have done most major projects throughout the history of the church over 40 years. A challenge offering is an opportunity to step out in faith, to ask God what to give, and then to obey. God knows your dreams and desires, and He knows the seed that you need to sow to see your harvest come in. We are now meeting with both the architect and with the construction firm that will build phase two. A few years ago, the Lord told me, you have done your last hard thing. The Lord has supernaturally ordered our every step. The very same construction firm that built the new football and baseball stadiums in North Arlington wants to build phase two. Every week we are taking action toward the fulfillment of this dream. We will expand to the south with a new dedicated sanctuary for the church with easy access and the ability to host special events. The new cafe will be more than double the size of the current cafe. Phase two will feature all new classrooms plus children's facilities for nursery, children's church, youth, and Sunday school. There will be no more set up or tear down for services. Praise the Lord. 
We will also expand the school with all new classrooms just for early childhood and for the youngest children. That is one of the school's greatest needs right now. New church offices will enable the school to grow in our current building. With the new master plan, our desire long-term is to also build a football stadium for the school along with a track and world-class facilities. Along US Highway 287, there will be a beautiful glass grand entrance with a covered drop-off and a much larger fellowship atrium. At Faith Christian Center, you are in a blessed place that is paid off. Praise His holy name. And there is an anointing on this ministry for debt to be paid off. So let us stand in faith together and so together to see our debt and our homes paid off. What does God have in store for us in the days ahead? I love Ezra 614. The elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah. They finished building according to the command of God. In the midst of everything going on in the world, we are blessed by God. As long as the Lord tarries, we will continue to build and to prosper. So step out in faith and so accordingly in the Spring Challenge offering. And let me say, we are well able to do this because God is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say that out loud. We are well able to do this because God is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take what you've decided to give, lift it up, say, thank you, Father God, for the privilege and the opportunity to give into your gospel, proclamation of your word. And as I give, I thank you. Your word is working in my life and in this church. There's enough money coming every seven days to meet every need, pay every bill. Not only that, more than enough is coming, enabling us to be generous on every occasion, enabling us to lend and not borrow. And for this, we give you our praise. And everyone in agreement said, Amen. 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 God bless you richly as you give and receive from the Lord this morning. Why don't you grab your Bible, whatever device you're going to be looking at the word on, let's stand up, make our confessions. And uh, let me say that this is not an Easter message. Uh, you know, if you're a guest, I guess I need to say this, everybody here knows, I don't do anything normal. And uh, so we're just in the middle of this series, the miracles of the New Testament, and we're just staying with it. And I think it's a great Easter message myself, but of course I have my opinions. Because in this message we have salvation, and in this message we have deliverance, and in this message, uh, you know, we have transformation of an entire family. All the things that were made possible by the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And none of it would have happened because we're in the book of Acts now, none of it would have happened without Jesus being raised from the dead. And so, of course, we understand it's Easter, but we are in this series, Miracles of the New Testament. And uh, I think it's, it's a great message for today. And uh, so that's the way it is. You ready for the word? This is my Bible. It is the word of God. And it is the will of God for my life. I am who the word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the word says I am, seated right now 
in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, and I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. As I'm taught the Word of God, my life has changed for the better, and I will never be the same again. Amen. Now before you get seated, let me tell you, you're beautiful. What, what a, you know, you're just beautiful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the congregation of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. 2024 is a year of miracles at Faith Christian Center. Can I get an amen? amen? I believe if we'll take action and enter into worship with all of our might, with all of our strength, and believe God's word and confess God's word, we will see God move among us in a mighty way. I said in December that 2024 will be a year of doubling. With God, all things are possible. But not only are all things possible with God, all things are possible for him who believes. However, that requires we do our part on Vision Sunday, January 7th. I challenged all of us to do four things in 2024. Be in church every time the doors are open. That is when you're in town. We understand not being in town. Number two, be on time. Better yet, be early. Worship with all your strength and enthusiasm. Enter in. Number three, tell somebody about Jesus at least every month. And number four, pray for a sick person in person at least once a month. Thank God for praying for people over the phone or email or whatever, but in person. There's something about in person, praying for somebody in person who needs a touch from the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, if you will do these things in 2024, a year from now, you will not even recognize your life. 2023 was a year of miracles, and uh, we thank God for that, but it's a new year, and we're, it's hard to believe we're a four through it, but we are believing for more miracles and a mighty move of God among us in 2024. Can I get an amen? amen. And what we did in 2023, and now this first part of 2024, is we're marching through the miracles of the New Testament looking for patterns and principles. If God's people could learn to look for and then apply the principles and patterns that they see in the miracles, not just of the New Testament, but in the miracles of the Bible, they could live their lives and hardly have an unmet need. The message today is Paul and Silas, prison doors open by an earthquake. I love it. Hallelujah. Even if they throw you in the slammer, it's not over. Amen. And this is Miracle 50 by our reckoning. Now, the past two Sundays, Aaron Wood De, uh, dealt with, when I say past two Sundays, the two Sundays previous to Palm Sunday, Aaron Wood dealt with miracle number 49, Paul cast, a, cast out a spirit of divination. And we don't need to review that, but we do need to say enough about that miracle for people here today to understand the setup for this miracle, number 50, Paul and Silas, prison doors opened by an earthquake. Acts 16, verse 16, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl. Everybody say slave girl. Slave girl. Say it again, slave girl. slave girl. And we like to think all of this is from the ancient times, but our government stopped doing DNA testing on youngsters crossing the border when they discovered how many of them had been raped and used and abused. So slavery is going on in 2024. Everybody wants to get upset about slavery 150 years ago, but slavery is going on right now. And it's all about what? Lousy, stinking money. And who's allowing it? Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl, those Epstein Island visitors. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, I told you, I don't do anything normal. Amen. Amen. You know what y'all need to do? You need to get rowdy. Amen. I said rowdy. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
I mean, you all look so nice on Easter, but I know my crowd, you're rough. <laughs> Before you got saved, you were rough. So uh, let some of that out. Amen. Let's get rowdy for the Lord. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money. What? She earned what? Money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. And somebody might say, well, that's advertising, but that's not the kind of advertising we in the gospel need. This slave girl was demon possessed. She had a demon spirit. She had a fortune telling spirit. And she was greatly used in that way by her owners. Everybody say owners. owners. She was greatly used in that way by her owners to get money. And this poor demon possessed slave girl had masters. Everybody say masters. Yeah. And finally, Paul got worn out. He got exasperated and agitated and a holy anger rose up in him and moved him to take action not against that poor slave girl, but against the demon inside her that was using her to make money for her masters. Verse 18, she kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, notice he wasn't talking to the girl. He said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. So apparently Paul was moved upon by the Holy Spirit to cast that devil out of that poor slave girl. Why else would Paul put up with this for many days and then take action? Now that demon obeyed the name of Jesus and came out at that very moment. The name of Jesus. There is no higher name. At that name every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord of all. And so the authorities in Philippi threw them in jail for casting the devil out of that poor slave girl. And why did that happen? Well, because these evil men saw that their hope of gain was gone. Friends, those are evil days. But friends, we too live in evil days. You know, looking at these photos, it's hard to believe. I was born again when John Fitzgerald Kennedy was president of the United States. And I never thought I would live to see the day when there would be a president of the United States of America who was such a filthy human being to declare Easter Sunday a trans awareness day. Filthy, 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 Filthy. So those were evil days, but we're in evil days. Tell your neighbor, we're living in evil days. Tell the neighbor on the other side, we're living in evil days. Now this same apostle Paul wrote to his understudy in the ministry, Timothy in 1 Timothy 6.10, for the love of money, not money, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. There's going to be a lot of people in hell because they made money their God and not Jesus. Now you listen to me real closely right here. You cannot trust man because the unsaved man will do anything for money. And saved people ought not act like that. I said, saved people ought not act like that. It's not just lost people who have gotten into spiritual trouble over money because Paul said, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith. So he's not just talking about lost people. He's talking about how even Christians get in trouble because they let the love of money get into their hearts and pierce themselves with many griefs. The love of money, not money. The love of money, not money. And then he says that some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Back to Acts 16, verse 19, when the owners 
of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an, an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. So think about this. For an act of kindness to a slave girl, for an act of kindness now, they have been flogged, they have been beaten, they're put in prison in the inner cell and their feet are in leg irons. So Paul and Silas got into this much trouble for setting a poor slave girl free from a demon. Why? 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 Because men love money. Because men love money. Lester Summerall taught me that if a man's not right with money, that man's not right. We are, lit, we are right now in the darkest age of human history. Even Adolf Hitler never even thought of doing medical experiments that are being done on children in 2024. These are the darkest days of human history and things are about to wind up. We are right now on the brink of a different dispensation. The age of grace is about to end. And I say that we ought to handle our money correctly to where God can entrust us with the riches of Abraham to get on with the work of God in the window, the time frame that we have left. We need to know God's thoughts about finances. We need to believe what God says about finances. And we need to say what God says about finances. And we need to do what God says, do with our money. I've watched Christians my whole life do things their way and the results are disastrous. Not only are God's people defeated, but we lost our country. Look at this ungodly, ungodly, ungodly bunch in charge. If we would but turn, 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 if we would but repent and do things God's way, our lives would utterly change. When we tithe, we break the power of covetous, uh, covetousness off of our lives. It is the love of money that destroys people. It is the love of money that destroys even God's people. The reason this is so important, friends, is that we handle money every day and we need money every day. So if you don't get your heart right on money, your heart won't be right. We have to be careful that we have a right attitude on money and that we handle money right. Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown into prison over money, lousy, stinking money. And these money lovers, these money grubbers began to cry out, these men are Jews who are throwing our city into an uproar. Let me tell you what, if God would give me the desire of my heart, I would love to throw Arlington into an uproar. I would love to throw Mansfield, Kennedale, and every surrounding community into an uproar. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we, we need a mighty, 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 mighty move of the Holy Spirit in these evil days. Can I get an amen? amen. Their hope of making money was gone. The King James Version says their hope of gain. The New King James Version says their hope of profit. You see, the love of money ruled their hearts. They did, listen, listen, somebody might say, I thought this was, you know, Faith Christian Center, Dr. Gene Lingerfeld, prosperity preacher, all that, and you're saying these things about money? Look, God, if you'll get your heart right on money, he can trust you with more. It's not about the dollars. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. It's about the heart. It's about the heart. The reason God's people don't have anything is they've had a wrong heart. If we get our heart right, God could trust us with more. Hey, somebody, I thought I said get rowdy. Man. They didn't care anything about that little demon-possessed slave girl. 
They didn't care anything about that little demon-possessed slave girl. I said they didn't care anything about that little demon-possessed slave girl. No one was rejoicing over that little demon-possessed slave girl being set free from Satan's power. No one was rejoicing over that little slave girl being delivered from the demon that had been living inside of her. All they cared about was money, lousy, stinking money. Here at Faith Christian Center, we're not going to be like that Laodicean church and say, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. That's Revelation 3.17, only to have Jesus say, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. No, we're going to use our money for God and we're going to use our money for good. I said, we're going to use our money for God and we're going to use our money for good. Can I get a rowdy amen? Yeah. All they cared about was money. Those visitors to Epstein Island, you know, dear God, nobody's ever been charged with a felony. Money. Money. All these, they, they did a, DNA test on a girl that had been, had came over the border and needed medical tra treatment. And she had 14 different DNA specimens of semen inside her. And semen can only be tested and last three days. So that had happened to her in three days. It's about money. Money and votes. Money and votes. And votes lead to money. It's about the money. It's about power. Amen. Amen. You got to get your heart right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, God has blessed us. It's amazing how God has blessed us. And, uh, you know, we just obeyed God on money. Go, Lord comes along and says, give it. We give it. You know, we don't think a thing about it. And, and then, you know, we go on down the road and we find out, golly, gee whiz, he multiplied it. And then he comes along and he says, give some more. And we get down the road and we look back and we think, man, he multiplied it. And then after a while, well, it starts to stack up. This is all in uh, 2 Corinthians 9. Amen. Amen. They, all they cared about was money. They didn't care about that little demon possessed girl. The layout of seeing church didn't care about people hooked on drugs and alcohol and people possessed by demon spirits. All that layout of seeing church cared about was money. So they were just like that pagan bunch in ancient Philippi. See, you can have a church and be like the pagans. I'm telling you, we've got to get loose from the love of money. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I say we got to get loose from the love of money. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning that the love of money is a spirit and it's a demon spirit. And it's running this world, and it's running our media, and it's running our politicians, and it's running our government, and it's running a whole lot of the church. But it's not running Faith Christian Center, and it's not running me. Hallelujah. 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 Shout out loud five times, money's not running me. See, if God gives you 10 dimes, if you love me, God says, if you love me, you'll give the first dime out of 10 into the gospel, which is my work, my mission and my house. And then you can keep the other nine. But the love of money will make you steal that first dime. I said, the love of money will make you steal that first dime. The love of money will make you steal that first dime and drag it back and say, no, God, I've got the nine dimes, but it's not enough. So I'm not going to give you that 10th dime. The love of money will make a man say to God, no, you, can, you, cannot, you can't have this one thin dime because I want all 10 dimes or I need all 10 dimes. And I'm not going to give you this one thin dime out of 10. See, that's the love of money. The love of money will make a man say to God, oh, no, I'm not going to tithe my income. And no, Father God, I'm not going to give into missions. When those Philippians saw that their hope of making money was gone, when they saw that their hope of gain was gone, when they saw that their hope of profit was gone, they turned to the secular authorities to try and get the, that Philippian church shut down. And just like the Pharisees did with Jesus, they tried to use secular authority to get Paul and Silas killed or at least severely beaten and imprisoned. Money. It was all about money. 
All they cared about was money. Their hearts were ruled by the love of money. And I'm telling you what, the world we live in, you know, during the uh, pandemic, uh, you saw those videos people had put together, all the very ABC, NBC, CBS, you know, all the various outlets, MSNBC, they were all saying the same thing word for word. Then we find out that the biggest advertising dollars came from Big Pharma. I mean, it's all about money. It's all about money. You know, people get myocarditis. Who cares? It's all about money. You know, you know myocarditis is fatal. Five years, that's it. So, oh yeah, well, so uh, too bad. It's all about the money. Now we got something for myocarditis. Oh, it causes cancer. Oh, well, no problem. Now we got something for cancer. I mean, it's all about the money, 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 all about the money. It's all about the money. Hallelujah. I say we ought to get saved. We ought to get filled with the Holy Ghost. We ought to get healed by God. Amen. We ought to handle our money right. And then we won't need, we won't need that system. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just live above it like the moon above the earth. Just not even need any of it. Amen. Verse 22, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. So there they were. There they were. I mean, they were severely flogged. They were severely beaten. They were in the inner cell. They were in leg irons for preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and for doing a good deed to this uh, demon-possessed slave girl. I mean, what a mess. And they could have been down. They could have been blue. They could have blamed God. They could have had a complaint in their mouth. But look at verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came off. Glory to God, everybody's chains came off. Hallelujah, everybody's chains came off. Hallelujah. In their, I could preach in their midnight hour. Hallelujah. Anybody here this morning ever been in a midnight hour besides Pastor Gene? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In their midnight hour, they were praising God. They were singing hymns to God. They could have had a complaint in their mouth. They could have, you know, they could have said to each other, we should never have signed up for preaching the gospel. I mean, they should have said, they could have said to each other, we should have left the demon in that slave girl. They could have cried and they could have whined and they could have complained. But in that midnight hour, stuck in the depths of a prison in leg irons for doing an act of kindness to a little slave girl and setting her free from demonic oppression, they were praying and praising and singing hymns to God. Hallelujah. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and all the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, hallelujah, I came down to this house to tell you this morning that you have a suddenly in your future. Hallelujah. I said, you have a suddenly in your future. I said, you have a suddenly in your it has already been appointed by God. It is already on the calendar. It has already been scheduled. Shout suddenly. suddenly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout, tell your neighbor, I got a suddenly on the way. Tell the neighbor on the other side, I, I got a suddenly on the way. Suddenly. <laughs> Suddenly. <laughs> Woo. Suddenly. Woo. Suddenly. Suddenly your healing will come. Hallelujah. Suddenly your debt will evaporate. Hallelujah. Suddenly you'll be delivered and set free. Hallelujah. 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 Suddenly the power of God will come upon you. <laughs> Woo. 
suddenly, 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 suddenly. <laughs> suddenly hallelujah I don't know about them but I'm ready for a suddenly <laughs> somebody might say why does he do that because I have it Hallelujah. Suddenly, <laughs> there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken at once. All the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, I love the King James, do thyself no harm for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. I mean, this is, I mean, my God. I mean, the jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them, he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. So this jailer had heard them praying and singing psalms unto God. And then the earthquake came around midnight. So the jailer was about to commit suicide knowing what the Romans would do to him if the prisoners escaped. But Paul and Silas said, do thyself no harm for we are all here. So the jailer came and fell down before them and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus you and you will be saved, you and your household. So the jailer got saved and the jailer's family got saved and Paul and Silas got out of jail. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ has power. What we need to do is stop apologizing for God and turn his word loose. I said, what we need to do is stop apologizing for God and turn his word loose. And then Paul and Silas said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your whole household. So the jailer was born again. His family was born again. And they all went back to that river outside of Philippi where the prayer meetings were being held. And that whole family was baptized there in the middle of the night in that river. Verse 33, at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. So now this nasty jailer has been born again, changed. And he took Paul and Silas who had been severely beaten and cast into prison unjustly. And he took them home. He took them home. Can you imagine? He took them home and set a meal before them. What a change has happened in him. Totally transformed by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. So now this jailer and his family are a part of the new church in Philippi. The church started out of a woman's prayer group down by the river with Lydia, a businesswoman who dealt in purple cloth and is now grown to include at least the other women and also this jailer plus his entire family. So then later, Paul wrote this letter to that same church in Philippi, Philippians 1, beginning in verse 1, Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, to all the saints, God's consecrated people in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the bishops, the overseers, and the deacons, the assistants, grace, favor, and blessing to you and heart peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you in every prayer of mine. I always make my entreaty and petition for you with all joy 
and delight. I thank my God for your fellowship, your sympathetic cooperation and contributions and partnership in advancing the good news, the gospel from now, from the first day you heard it until now. And I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. You see what Paul is talking about? I thank my God for your fellowship, your sympathetic cooperation and contributions and partnership in advancing the good news, the gospel, from the first day you heard it until now. Do you see what Paul is talking about? Paul's talking about the Philippians being joined up to be partners together with him to spread the gospel to the regions beyond. And he's writing to thank them for their participation and partnership. And this, my friends, is why Philippians was written to them. Everybody wants to grab Philippians 4.19 and claim it. But wait a minute. It was written to a people who had partnered together and had participated and contributed to advancing the gospel. And that is who Philippians 4.19 was written to because of their participation and their partnership in the gospel. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And people want to pick that up and take it out of context and name it and claim it. But it was written to people who participated in giving and partnering together in the advancement of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Amplified Version says, and my God will liberally supply, fill to the full, your every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall, shout it out loud, but my God shall. My God shall. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Written to people who had partnered together with Paul and had contributed into the gospel and had become partners in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I believe that in 2024, like the early church, God wants us to have a time of peace. I believe he wants us to be strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. And I believe he wants us to experience a time of growth, living in the fear of the Lord. So live a life, of, I believe God wants you to live a life of answered prayer. I believe God wants you to live a life of miracles. I believe that you can write your own ticket with God if you'll simply be a doer of the word of God. And as God blesses you, and as God answers you, and as God does mighty miracles in your life, as suddenly comes upon you, don't just keep it all to yourself, tell others. Tell others, tell others, tell others. Tell others about the goodness of God. Tell others about the love of God. Tell others about the grace of God. Tell others about the healing power of God. Tell others about Jesus, that he lived for them and died for them and that he paid the price for their sins, and that he is not in the grave, but that he is risen. He is alive, and he is alive, and he does miracles today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell others that Jesus still saves today. Tell others that Jesus still heals today. Tell others that Jesus still delivers today. Tell others that Jesus still blesses today. Tell others, tell others, tell others, tell others. Tell your neighbor, tell others. Tell, others. tell the neighbor on the other side, tell others. tell others. And if we would all do a better job of telling others, then many, many people will see and turn to the Lord in 2024. If we will all do a better job of telling others, many will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in 2024. If we will do a better job of telling others, then 2024 will be for us a time of peace. We'll be strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. And we will live in a time of great growth as we live in the fear of the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads. I want to give an opportunity for people to give their lives to Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Thank God Almighty, Jesus is alive. You may be here this morning and you've been in church, but you've never personally and you've never individually invited Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. Well, the Word of God says in John's Gospel, chapter 3, that God so loved the world, he gave his only son. 
that whosoever would believe on him would not be lost or perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus said, you must be born again. He didn't say it was a good idea. He didn't say it was highly recommended. He said, you must be born again. Over there in Revelation chapter three, Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. So how many this morning would say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus this morning. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to live for him. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to give my life to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone here this morning? Yes, thank you. Anyone else? It's a great day, you know, because in the future when Satan wants to whip you with things, you can always remember that you got saved on Easter Sunday, 2024. Anyone else? There may be others here this, yes, over here. There may be others here this morning and you're, you're backslidden. You're not living for the Lord like you used to. You're not living for the Lord like you promised him you would. The word says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many this morning would say, Pastor, hearing the word this morning, I, I, I realize how far I've drifted away from God and from the things of God. And I don't want to be lost and undone. I want to make it right. And I want to recommit my life to God. And I want to live for him from this day to my last day. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. We're going to pray. Pastor, I want to recommit my life to God. I want to make it right. I want to live for him from this day to my last day. If that's you, wherever you are, lift a hand up. We're going to pray. Everybody in the room, let's stand up. We want, to, we want to give opportunity and make room for people to make a public profession of faith. If you raise your hand for either invitation, I want you to do this. Gather your belongings in hand so you're not worried about your stuff and step boldly into that aisle and join me here at the front. We're going to pray. You know, the world is crazy bold about what they're believing. I mean, they're crazy bold about insanity. Why can't we be crazy bold about the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. So if you raise your hand for either invitation, take your stuff in hand, step boldly into the aisle, join me here at the front. And let me say this, I know God is always calling and drawing and pulling and tugging. And so maybe you didn't raise your hand, but God is calling you. God is speaking to you. God is drawing you. There's a tug, hallelujah. And uh, the power, yes, God bless you. The power is to answer it. The power is to take action on it. Amen. You know what that is? That's the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we're going to all pray together for the sake of these that come and anybody watching online that wants to give their life to Jesus or recommit their life to Jesus. Everybody in the room, let's pray this out loud. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. I give you my life. Time's gone by. I've gone my own way. I've done my own thing. But I turn. I repent. And I give you my life in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, for your kindness and your mercy and your grace. I thank you that in your grace you sent Jesus to die a horrible and a cruel death for me so that I would not need to die throughout all of eternity. So I believe, I believe, Father God, that Jesus came for me. He died for me. He was buried for me. He went to hell for me. But you did not suffer. You're a holy one to see corruption. But you raised him on that Easter Sunday morning. And he is alive now and seated at your right hand. So I believe and I confess Jesus is Lord. And I thank you, Father God, for receiving me and accepting me into your family of faith. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I have a book I want to give you, God's Very Own Child. And if you'll go with Mr. Jeff Hughes, we'll get that book into your hands and get you right back in the service. Let's give God thanksgiving for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're watching online and you committed your life to Christ, you can reach out to us at faithchristiancenter.com slash salvation and uh, let us know about 
what God has done in your life today, and we'll send you a copy of that book also, God's Very Own Child, faithchristiancenter.com slash salvation. And let us know what God has done in your life. Amen. 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 What a great day. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. How many of you are ready to give in the spring challenge offering? Amen. Amen. Now, before we do that, we're going to show a short video, and it just makes it easier for instructions. If you have an outstanding commitment, take action toward your commitment and work to finish it. Also, give a separate gift as led by the Holy Spirit. There is just over $300,000 outstanding from previous commitments, so let's get those monies in. In this season, we are enjoying everything being paid off and we are setting money aside for the future. I believe that when we cut the ribbon for phase two, it will be paid for in full with no debt outstanding because with God, all things are possible. Together, we will succeed and prosper like never before. If you have finished your previous commitment, you can make a new commitment and you can give part or all on the day of the challenge offering. To give in the spring challenge offering or toward a previous commitment, you can use an envelope. You can give online at FCCgive.com. Just select the category challenge. To give by text, text FCC plus the amount plus the word challenge to 45777. Then visit FCCarlington.com slash challenge. Fill out the short form to let us know how much you're committing in the spring challenge offering how much you're giving in the Spring Challenge offering, and whether you're giving any amounts toward previous commitments. What does God have in store for us in the days ahead? I love Ezra 6.14. The elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah. They finished building according to the command of God. In the midst of everything going on in the world, we are blessed by God. As long as the Lord tarries, we will continue to build and to prosper. So step out in faith and sow accordingly in the Spring Challenge offering. And let me say, we are well able to do this because God is with us. Amen. So to give in the Easter Challenge offering, you can use an envelope, you can give online at the church website, or you can give by text with your cell phone. And uh, if it's an envelope, mark challenge. Also write the church office a note to let us know how much you're giving today, how much you're committing, and whether you are giving any amounts toward previous challenge offerings. And to give online, you can visit fccgive.com and use the category challenge. If you give by text using your cell phone, you text FCC in the amount, the word challenge, to 45777. And all of this is working, but we are having trouble with one domain that we typically use. So these instructions are going to change in this next thing I'm about to say. We normally give you a short web address to make things easy to write to the church office and let us know what you're doing in the challenge offering but we're having trouble with that address we typically use, so we have an alternative, because I believe in backup. Ask my family, I believe in backup, amen? So if you use the online or text giving, then visit faithchristiancenter.com slash challenge, the whole thing, faithchristiancenter.com slash challenge to let us know how much you're giving today, how much you're committing, and whether you are giving any amounts toward previous commitments. You can also just email the church at challenge at fccarlington.com, challenge at fccarlington.com, and let us know what you're doing. I love, of course, anybody that was here this week knows, I love 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously, each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able, <laughs> shout it out loud, God is able. God is able. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that, in all, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. 
Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And that's what this is. This is an occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So I thank you for your help. And my prayer for you is what Moses said in Deuteronomy 1.11, may the Lord God, may the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousand times and bless you as he has promised. <clears throat> Years ago, Austin used Deuteronomy 1.11 in a message or an offering. And I sat right over there and I thought to myself, oh dear Lord, Austin, don't use that verse. That's just too far out there. And the Lord spoke to me sharply, not angrily, but he spoke to me sharply. And he said, why don't you go home and look it up? <laughs> and so I did. And now on a certain spreadsheet, it's there. It's an automatic formula. I think last time I looked, uh, since Sue and I got married, God has blessed us about 13,500 times. Amen. Amen. So it's not a big thing. Amen. When you serve a great big God, it's not a big thing for him to multiply you a thousand times. Amen. Amen. Ask your neighbor, can you handle a thousand times? Amen. Amen. I know I can. I got my hands up. I can handle a thousand times. Amen. 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 So may the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousand times and bless you as he has promised. Here at Faith Christian Center, God is building something and we're working together with him. Everything we do is about sharing the gospel with people around us. It's about welcoming people to the house of the Lord so that by the word of God, we can open up their hearts so they can hear the gospel, so their life can be transformed. That is possible for men and women and boys and girls to meet Jesus, that God has not called any of us to just attend church. He has called all of us to be a part of his church. God has supernaturally raised this place up and it is God who is at work in this place. He is working in this place. He is building his church. He is energizing his church. He is drawing people to his church. He is saving people. God is healing people. And God is at work in this place. Can I get an amen? amen? Here at Faith Christian Center, God is building something and we're working together with him. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his truth to shine upon you. May the Lord our God be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Take what you've decided to give, lift it up, say thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to sow into the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm in agreement with Moses that you'll bless me a thousand times. I thank you, Father God, in the holy name of Jesus for your blessing upon this place and your blessing upon us. And as we follow your word and we not allow money to rule our hearts, we are more blessed because you can trust us with more. We thank you for it in Jesus' holy name. And everybody in agreement said amen. 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 God bless you richly as you give and receive from the Lord this morning.
coming to us on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. We have wonderful Sunday school classes going on after the service. If you're not sure where to go, just ask someone at guest services and they'll head you in the right direction. And we'll be back Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. We've got something for the entire family. God bless you as you go in his victory today.